Wow. Does that look great or what? Why does the lawn always look so great after a thunderstorm? <laughs> Doc, it's the nitrogen from the lightning. I get it. Man. Doc, you're going to die if you stay out here. All right, well, let's go back to the shed. We'll sit down. We're going to talk about soil tests. Soil tests and reading results and what you should do with the results. So I'm going to go back to the shed here so I don't get struck by lightning. So hold on. So Saturday evening, it's like 4.30. You can hear the thunderstorms in the background. Yesterday we went out, uh, good video to watch. If you didn't watch the video before this one, which was putting down everything in one day, basically a lot of people ask about, can I put down different treatments? In other words, can I put down granular fertilizer and humichar or a fungicide and how many days do I have to wait? And what I wanted to show you yesterday is that, you know what? If your lawn looks like crap or it has troubles, just put it down. Put it down, especially these granular products. A lot of the stuff we use is the DG particle, and that's a professional dispersible granule. No one else has that technology. So that's why you put it down. We've got these whole week of these patterns. We've got these afternoon thunderstorms moving in. Perfect. Perfect for this stuff. We put it all down yesterday afternoon. Didn't get any thunderstorms last night. But today, we probably got about a half inch of rain in about 30 minutes. Perfect. Hey guys, uh, I'm actually out here on my cell phone because I wanted to show you something real quick. Yesterday we came out and we did this full treatment. So we put everything down because I wasn't sure exactly what Barb had going on here. We just had the rain. Let me show you what happened. Look what we got here, my friends. Look at that. That's pretty crazy there. Man, I don't think I've ever seen that happen before, had the grubs actually come up. Maybe because it's so dry, but when that when that uh, kill product hit them, look, there's another one. Look, right there. See it? I've never had so many grubs come up out of the ground immediately. Wow. So let's go to a spot. We're gonna have to come back and retreat. But I'm just gonna go to areas real quick. Look at that, see? So I got a bad area over here and look, grubs. So, uh, as some of you know, I sent off my, I did a bunch of different soil tests, which I like to test my soil at least twice a year, if not three times a year because we do a lot of testing back here. So what I did was, um, we, I te wanted to test the humichar soil in the garden, the remake of it. I wanted to do another test on it. I wanted to test the backyard and I wanted to test the putting green. Now with the putting green, if you've been following that project, we did a overseed, there's Bermuda there, common regular sod Bermuda, but we wanted to put a dwarf grass and you can't get dwarf Bermuda seed. They don't sell it, it's not made. So we put, we mixture of bent and blue dwarf creeping. And the last time we had germination, but it just sort of never showed up. So I'm assuming it was pre-emergent was still around, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't a pH or something else. So we sent off the soil test there. So we got all through all the tests back and I'm gonna go over them with you. So when you get your test, now I use Clemson. The reason why I use Clemson is you, it's one sheet, it's simple, you send it off, it's $6 a test, um, and you get an email, and all your links are there, they go right to the reports, everything is there, plus they do a CEC analysis in a standard $6 test. CEC, if you don't understand it, it's the caddy and exchange capability. You need to learn that, I'm not gonna go into that. Basically it's, how rich is your soil? Can your soil hold on to nutrients and deliver those nutrients to the plant? So when you have, so when you have uh, that dark, rich, like Midwestern soil, it's gonna have a real high CEC. Your CEC may be off the chart at 30. Clay and sand, like we have around here, is about a five. It's real crappy. 
So that's why we're dumping all this human char on. We're adding humic acid. It's 50-50. It's 50% humic acid, 50% biochar. We're trying to bump up our CECs. And the results I got back were pretty shocking, actually, on that. So that's why I like to monitor my CECs. But the things, the main things you want to check when you get a soil and you don't overreact to them is you want to test your soil pH. You want to look at your soil pH and you want to look at usually your phosphorus. I guess phosphorus and potassium. You want to look at your macros. I'm really not worried about the nitrogen because we're constantly putting nitrogen on. We know the grass, we know we're going to be putting out PGF complete every three to four weeks. Your lawn wants nitrogen all the time. We get that. But the main thing I'm looking at is I'm looking at the phosphorus level because phosphorus really doesn't change that much. Once you have a phosphorus level in your lawn, it's going to stay there. So if it's high, it's hard to get rid of it because it stays in the soil. And if it's low, then you got you have to add it to it. So I'm really looking at my phosphorus. I'm looking at my macros. So I'm looking at three main things, pH, macros, mainly phosphorus, and then I'm looking at um, the CECs. So let's start with the backyard because the backyard was actually a pretty decent result. So the backyard, I'll put it up, 6.1 on the pH. I can live with that, that's fine. Uh, a little bit high on potassium, but everything else was within the sufficient range. The CEC is what surprised me. This, these clay soils around here are normally about a five. And since we've been dumping humichar and some of the chicken feed on there, but mainly the humichar on there, I'm close to a nine. I'm 8.6 on the CEC, which is really unusual for this nasty red clay soil. So that is excellent. The higher the CEC, the less fertilizer you have to use. That's basically what we're looking at. So the back, I'm happy with the back. Next, let's look at, um, let's look at the chicken feed, the humichar garden soil. Again, almost identical to the last results we did on this. Soil pH was a 6.0. Every single nutrient's gonna show excessive. It's gonna be off the chart, and that's normal. It produces so many nutrients naturally and organically in there that that's why our gardens just go crazy. We don't have to use any fertilizer. Don't do not use fertilizer if you go with this humichar soil because it is just loaded with nutrients. Again, the CEC off the chart. Um, we're, we're usually between 18 and 20 on this stuff, which is unreal. So that's really good. So real happy with the chicken feed, human char, super compost. And there's a ton of videos on that already up there. Uh, the one I wanted to talk to you about really was the green. And this is where even someone like me, I, I screw up. I made a mistake on the green. I put down seed on there and I assumed that the pre-emergent was still effective. So I'm coming back a month later to do it again. But in my mind, I said, well, I know I'm low on phosphorus because every soil around here is low on phosphorus. Well, guess what? I get my soil test back and the phosphorus is actually high. <laughs> Stupid me. All right, so I can put a little bit of um, iron back there and sort of correct that issue. That's not a problem. Soil pH, my soil pH um, tested about a four, 4.5 back there and it's showing four 5.9 here so i did i did i want to bring that up to about a six or 6.5 on the soil ph uh but what surprises me on this and now we put 10 to 20 times the normal level of human char down there and what we did was we just coated it we put like a quarter half an inch all across that turned it black and look at the cecs we're at a uh, we're at a nine and almost the just the top inch, which is almost all sand. It's a very sandy, very little organic matter in there, and that's a nine. That's really unusual. So that's phenomenal. That's excellent. So actually, I'm really happy. I don't have to do anything. I'm assuming now, or it sort of confirms in my mind that my pre-emergent was still effective. I was at the three-month mark when I put it down the last time, when we seeded the last time, and I think we had done a heavy pre-emergent treatment, and I think it stopped the roots from growing and they just sort of died off. Now I'm actually going again. I've actually got some micro footage of seeds germinating that I dug up day before yesterday. I'll put that up. I shot it with my iPhone, with my new lens. 
you can see the seeds sort of floating around in there and you can see a germination you can see a full root so I've got germination over there which is good we'll see how this goes uh, hopefully that the pre-emergent is gone from there now let's talk about the corrections hey guys so, all right so let's talk about the adjustments and uh, I'm not gonna get too deep into this now in the Bermuda lawn guide I cover a lot of this stuff I don't like to do pH adjustments really during the growing season. I like to kind of stay away from that, like in the hot growing season, but you can do them. It's not an issue. Um, what I like to do is I really like to do it late fall, winter, and real early spring, maybe even late winter, because you're going to have to put down a crap load of lime to make adjustment. I just don't like to do it during the growing season. Also, it takes months and months and months to make a true soil adjustment down to three or four inches. It takes a long time. So let's say you want to do an emergency adjustment. You can do liquid products. So back here, I've got a liquid, um, a liquid lime and a liquid sulfur. So you can use these products, but how you use them is at sunset, at sunset, what I want you to do is you come out and you spray it on your lawn and then water it right in. In other words, get it off your grass and get it into your soil because your soil is what's needing the adjustment. Don't leave it on your grass. It's not like a, it's not like it's gonna burn it, but it can just do some discoloration to it. So I figured out most people are gonna need lime. Um, there are three forms of lime. One is granulated, um, one is pulverized, and then you have suspended or liquid. It never really dissolves, so they call it suspended. Your pelletized takes a long time, of course, to get down into the soil. The pulverized is the white powder, and you have to have a drop spreader. You can't put it out with a rotary spreader. You have to have a drop spreader to put out pulverized. And pulverized is probably one of the best that you can use, but you got to have a drop spreader. So the next option is to go with the liquid. Again, it's a suspended. In other words, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't dissolve. It's just in liquid form. But here's the nice thing, that's a two and a half gallon container and it works out perfectly. You put 2.5 gallons per acre and if you do, if you use these spray bottles, our spray bottles from Anderson's, um, it'll work out perfectly as far as, the, as, as, far as the, the rate. Again, calculating that one of these bottles covers about 2,000 square feet. So just kind of a moderate spray rate. I would put a little bit of green dye, just a few, just like a half a teaspoon or so, just so you can see if, make sure it's coming out. I'm gonna warn you, I have not tested this inside these sprayers, so you may wanna screen it, use like a, you know, a hundred mesh screen or something, screen it and put a little bit of green dye, because I have not tested. I don't think it'll be an issue, but um, you can go ahead and spray it. Again, also, if you have high pH, there's liquid sulfur. You can actually spray liquid sulfur on your lawn. Same sort of thing. But don't leave it on your grass. After you spray it out, get it watered it down into your soil. So let's talk about the number one adjustment people usually need to make is low phosphorus. And phosphorus is pretty important. And one of the problems is, of course, most of your fertilizers and states ban phosphorus applications. So we're going to come out with... Um, the other problem is, is a lot of fertilizers are slow release and that doesn't do you any good. You don't need something that goes out over four to eight weeks. You want something that goes out right away. So our jumpstart program in the early spring, I recommend that you just go buy some cheap 10, 10, 10 and throw some 10, 10, 10 out, especially if you haven't had a soil test or if you need to raise your phosphorus, you can do it through a 10, 10, 10. You're not dumping a whole bunch of nitrogen down. That's a really good way to do this in the spring to get nutrients into your soil because you're not dumping a huge amount of nitrogen. Same thing in the fall on Bermuda. We don't want to put down a huge amount of new, um, nitrogen, but we still want nutrients. So this product is going to be a 10-10-10 with 2% iron with your micros, and it's going to be a fast release. In other words, it goes down quickly. And that's one of the problems is a lot of these things take a lot of time to get into your soil. So they take a lot of time to get into your soil. This product, I told Anderson's when we develop this, I want this to be everything fast release. So you're gonna put it down, you're gonna put it at a light rate, maybe quarter pound of nutrients per thousand square feet. I think it's gonna be called PGF Balance. 
uh, just because it's a 10 10 10 and it has all your micros and it has 2% iron it's gonna be a really cool product and because we're putting it down lightly one of the problems with garden 10 10 10 is it's real chunky and so it just there's total uneven distribution I told them I want this stuff really really tiny so just like PGF it's gonna be small small particle size tiny particle size 10 10 10 fast release micros 2% iron it's gonna be great for your Bermuda grass guys, you're gonna put it down. As soon as your temperatures are starting to drop below the 80s, you can put down a light coat of this. And in the spring, we're gonna put down a coat of this in the spring too. So I'll let you know when that's available. I'll be doing a video, hit subscribe. So basically that's how we're gonna do, you wanna find a high phosphorus fertilizer, which is almost, some, you, can, you can't go to any store just about and find it. You want a high phosphorus fertilizer. Um, and if you're low on phosphorus. If you're high on phosphorus, then obviously just put down normal fertilizer. Just sort of ignore it. Eventually it'll work away. Just use regular PGF complete or it's a 412. It has very, very little phosphorus in it. But uh, that's basically it. That's how you make your adjustments. And uh, I got a bunch of work to do, but I hope uh, you got something from this and I'll talk to you later. Bye.